Pembroke Town News is here with Josh Cutler, state representative, uh, seeking re-election. Um, so, Mr. Cutler, legislatively, what's ahead? Well, lots going on. Uh, there's been a lot of good work the last two years, really, um, working uh, in conjunction with Democrats and Republicans on Beacon Hill and also Governor Baker's administration. We've made some progress in a number of areas. Uh, they're hitting the opiate issue, trying to address our public transportation. We passed a major clean energy bill. I was helped to draft that as a member of the Energy Committee. Um, locally, we've had some successes, too. Uh, we were able to get some funding for Pembroke, enhancing for our pond to help treat hydrilla and include green algae that have been big problems. Um, one of the big things we fought for, and I'm very pleased uh, we were successful, was getting more Chapter 70 aid, which is the primary way that our state funds our local school districts. Because of some, some changes we were able to advocate for in terms of the formula, our district will see an extra $100,000 each um, for our school. So for Pembroke, it'll be about $108,000. Same for Duxbury, it will enhance, we'll see about $135,000. So that's some real significant positive changes that we were able to make for, our, uh, for the South Shore, for our district in the past two years. And I'm, I love my job. I love coming to work every day and working with people. And we, you know, we try to focus on on getting, on, on solving problems. I think that's what people want and expect from their government is to put aside the partisanship and really focus on solutions. And I think folks who know me know that, you know, I work hard and try to work across the aisle to get things done. I'm competing with a lawnmower across the street, so hopefully your viewers can hear. But we've got a lot of good things that we've been able to accomplish. There's still a lot more work to be done in the next session. And that's why I'm running for re-election. Um, you know, I'm working hard to earn every vote. It's primary day here today. We're here in Duxbury. Uh, it's not a tremendous turnout, but hopefully more folks will come and do the good work of Pembroke News and, uh, and others will we'll, we'll get this turnout up. But I'm excited to be running again to be a candidate and to try to do the best I can to help uh, folks in Pembroke Duxbury Hanson. You are renowned for crossing the aisle to get things done. More in particular, or specifically, what legislation on the books is coming up that you perceive that that uh, trade coming in. Sure. Well, I think, you know, a lot of, number one, a lot of issues are not partisan at all. Uh, the opiate crisis, number one. Uh, we've been working very hard the last, you know, two, two terms that I've been in to try to address the opiate crisis, stem the tide, uh, working on all three legs of the stool, prevention, uh, treatment, um, and uh, trying to, to really come at it from a holistic point of view. And, you know, we've made some important progress, but obviously I'd be the first to say we're not there yet, that we're still dealing with, you know, opiates in our communities. And we need to do more. Uh, this session, we made a, we made a couple major positive steps. One of which was to pass a bill to tighten uh, prescription drug uh, practices, so that we're not hopefully we're cutting down on this so-called doctor shopping. People going around the doctor and getting excess prescription drugs. Because studies show that that's sort of the first step towards uh, opiate abuse is prescription drug abuse. So we're trying hard to uh, address that. We passed a major bill, a bipartisan bill. It passed the House unanimously signed by Governor Baker. I was very proud to play a role in that, to help advocate for that. And that's now in effect and having a, you know, a concrete impact on people's lives. But we'll have to clearly continue to, to, to tackle opiate issues in the next session. Um, there's still more work to be done. There's more work to be done on energy issues, um, addressing the MBTA, you know, you name it. Any issue you can think of, there's always more work to be done. There's never, that's, that's what makes the job fun and challenging. Every day I get up, there's something new, some issue that crops up that we have to try to tackle. And uh, you can never rest in your world. You got to keep working hard. What are the big, big, major complaints about the opioid crisis? Is the lack of beds and treatment facilities? What is that new bill? How sure, does that absolutely. That you, can hit the, you hit one of the big uh, issues here. So you know, we're trying to hit this on a sort of a three-legged stool, trying to help the people who are currently suffering, currently need treatment. And as you know, you know, once you've made the decision to try to get help, you don't want to run into stumbling blocks, right? That's the, that's the worst thing that can happen. So last session, we actually passed the bill. Um, to allow people who need to get detox treatment as prescribed by their doctor to qualify automatically without having to get insurance company pre-authorization. That had been a stumbling block in the past, and now because of the changes we've made, you can get up to 14 days of detox treatment if prescribed by your doctor without having to go through your insurance company and get pre-approval. Okay? That's just a first step. Obviously, you know, long-term treatment requires more than that, but it's an important change in, in your thinking, trying to get people help you know, when they need it. So that's one way to get help. Obviously, we need to make sure more beds are available, and that's that's a funding issue, frankly. Trying to increase funding for the Department of Public Health, Department of Mental Health. Uh, I'm a big believer that a lot of these issues also uh, cross over with mental health issues. And, uh, we need to be addressing mental health issues as part of a, a larger picture uh, way to tackle uh, opiates. So, uh, those are two key ways. You know, other ways we've been trying to, to address this issue with the uh, through drug courts. We were successful in expanding the, 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 the uh, Plymouth Drug Court, which has been very successful in trying to 
tackle uh, these uh, kinds of cases in a way that's not just lock them up. Because that doesn't that's that kind of thinking is is, is is not successful. Hasn't been proven effective. And we need to kind of move past that uh, and treat people like who are in, you know in crisis as, as patients and not as criminals. You know, while still you know taking a towing a tough line with, with you know dealers and people who are pushing this on our street. So um, those are a couple areas that we absolutely need to continue to make progress on. I think we made some good progress, but there's still more work to be done. Okay. Um, water issues on the South Shore, um, that's a huge concern, especially in towns like Pembroke. Um, that have seen like massive drops in the water. What legislatively, solution-wise, do you foresee that? So again, water issues, pond, you know, ponds are a part of our life. You know, it's, it's not just where we get our water and, and uh, you know, have the home to our ecosystems, but it's where we, you know, we recreate and have fun and, and, and enjoy time with our friends and family. So it's a big part of the beauty of living here on the South Shore. So one of the things since I was first elected trying to work with the Pembroke, Pembroke Watershed Association and other local groups to get more funding to address things like the hydrilla, the blue green algae. But you put your head on, on, on a bigger issue, which is water management practices in terms of Silver Lake. And we've had a major, major uh, problem with the city of Brockton and the way they are drawing water from Silver Lake, which then impacts West One Ponsa Pond and filter stew to many of the other ponds. And the herring migration. Exactly. Every, you name it. And so uh, along with Representative Tom Falter, my colleague over in Halifax, we've been working trying to get our Brockton officials to sit down with us and come to some agreement about uh, better management of our water supply. We actually have a, a meeting, an important meeting coming up that he and I have scheduled September 24th down at the uh, down over in Halifax to address this very issue. Uh, it's something we've been working on for a long time. We've been working with the DPP with um, asking them for a consent order, which is basically a way administratively for them to step in and take some action. That's something we've been advocating for for the last two years. We're getting close to getting that resolved, I think. So uh, we've been able to revitalize the Pembroke County, Pembroke County Water, uh, Central Pembroke County Water District. It's a lot of vowels, Central Pembroke County Water District, uh, to get that up and going again. So we've made a lot of progress, I think, but clearly there's more work to be done, and um, we need to ensure that Brockton is being a responsible neighbor way it uses our water. Well, we know you're eager to go vote right now. Yeah, I gotta go vote. <laughs> what, what message do you have for our listeners of Pembroke? Oh, my message is, you know, hey, I, I, I really love the job. It's an honor to serve you. I've been working very hard. I feel like I've done a good job for the town, for Pembroke, and Guthrie Hanson. I've uh, been a bipartisan voice. I've been a 100% voting record. And uh, I'd be honored to, to be allowed to continue doing it for another two years. Great. Okay. Thank you for your time, Joseph. Thank you.